Welcome back to Multi Transfer 3550. Today I'm going to be reading Wings of Fire, The Dangerous Gift, uh, Chapter 7 and Chapter 8. Chapter 7. Everything is fine, Snowfall muttered to herself. She glowered at the silvery fish flickered, flickering around her talons. The ocean was unpleasantly warmer here than it was up around the Ice Kingdom. There's nothing to worry about. I'm definitely not wearing a piece of haunted jewelry. It'll slide off easily at any moment and then I'll feel silly. A gift of vision. No, she barked in the ring. It's not possible. How could an icing object give me weird dreams about weird faraway dragons that weren't supposed to exist? The last thing she needed was mystical visions of total strangers. How was that supposed to help her be a strong, powerful, excellent queen? Who was the idiot animus, animus that would come up with something like this? If she had to u have a magic vision, couldn't it be about something useful? Like, say, a certain scheming sister who might be plotting to take her, take her from? And even if it was the source of a dream, that didn't explain why it wouldn't come off now. She soaked the ring under until her claws felt, started to feel numb. And then she yanked on it as hard as she could. Ow, it wasn't even budging. Great eye spirits, she hissed at the opal. What is wrong with you? She tried wedging a claw under the bed, but it was too tight. She tried wiggling it furiously, but it wouldn't even spin around her claw. She tried smashing the opal into a rock sticking out of the water, but that just made her towns her. The opal twinkled softly at her, completely intact. What are you doing? Snow Link's voice behind her. Nothing, Snowfall called over her shoulder. She stuck the ring back in the water and turned around with her most uh, serenely reg regal, uh, reg regal face on. Lynx did a thing with her eyebrows that meant something like, I know you're lying, but I can't say you are because you're the queen. But maybe you should have just admit it because my eyebrows are so on to you. Well, you were doing that whole thing. No, that nothing very vigorously, Link said. So I wondered, you know, a whole lot of vigorous nothing before breakfast. Maybe I have had breakfast, Snowfall observed. You wouldn't know since you have been asleep half the morning. I do know that you have not, Link said, because I asked the guards and they said that you've been out here for ages, doing battle with either your own claws or an invisible shark. Snowfall bristled and shot a dark look at our guards, who were lined up on the beach with concerned expressions. Is that what they said? No, Lynx admitted. They just said you haven't had breakfast yet. I interpreted the rest by watching you for a few minutes. I am having a swim, Snowfall said, lifting her chin. There's nothing unusual about that. I've seen you swim, Lynx said. You don't usually look, look quite so like an activated squid. I'm just going to start making a mental list, Snowfall informed her. So when I get home, I can ex ex execute you for all your trenching at once. One will probably be enough, Blink said, laughing. She flicked a spray of water at Snowfall with her tail. Come on, Snowfall. Even queens need someone to talk to. Tell me what's wrong. Nothing is wrong, Snowball protested. Protested. It's just having a small problem with this ring I can't get off, and it's not important. I mean, not compared to what are we going to do with all these homeless dragons and the bad thing they're running away from? Like, seriously. Link tilted her head and studied Snowball for a moment, as though she were a palm tree that had suddenly sprouted in the middle of the ice palace. They'll be all right now that they're here, she said finally. Let me see that ring. Snowfall gradually held out her talons, and Lynx gripped the ring between her claws. She pulled and wiggled it and tried slicing her claws under it and yanked some more until Snowfall finally got split fed up and snatched her arm back. Well, you're no use, Snowfall hissed. No surprise there. She ducked, dunked her claws in the water again. But now Snowf Lynx looked worried, which meant she was about to get very annoyed. It's not, uh, it's really not moving at all, she said. Snowfall, was that from the forbidden treasury? Is it an amin is it animus touch? Snowfall frowned and shook a piece of seaweed off her tail. Yes, but it doesn't work. Are you sure? Link asked. What is it supposed to do? It's supposed to make your eyes sharp, eyes sharp, eyesight sharper, Link said. But it didn't make any difference at all, which is why I want it off. Were there any notes? Link pressed. 
about how to use it or what it did for other queens or who made it? No, Snowfall said, nobody wrote an equal encyclopedia about it. It's not that complicated. Put on the ring, get better vision. But that isn't what happened, Link said. Wait, were there any notes? Her expression shifted to the most absolutely irritating, wide-eyed alarm. Did you just put it on without knowing anything about it? Why not? Snowball snapped. Better vision would be helpful. But no, what not if there's a catch? What, but what if there's a catch? Link said. But what if the secret? What if there's a secret downside to the spell? What if the animus dragon who made it added curse to the magic? Or what if some? What if it does something entirely different than a thought it would? Snowball shoved that drive away. Then we wouldn't have kept it. She snarled at Link's. It would have still be in our territory, in our treasury, if it was evil. Some cursed queen before us would have destroyed it. Unless it was enchanted, so it could never be destroyed, Linksy yelped, sounding uncomfortably like Stuffall's inner mon monolith. Maybe it magically shows up in the treasure or in treasury once every hundred years and then shares a new hapless queen. It's not, I'm not hapless, Snowfall shouted. Who's being paranoid now? It was a gift for ice and queens, so it's supposed to make us stronger and safer, like the wall on the great ice cliff. Personally, I don't think it makes our tribe stronger for us to all be constantly pitted against each other, like I cried. And I don't think cutting us from the other tribes makes us safe either. Wow, Snowfall said with a hiss, questioning the most fundamental gifts that are, hold our tribe together. You really don't belong in first circle. What kind of an ice wing are you? The kind who actually stinks for herself sometimes, Link said, flinging up her wings and accidentally slashing a small fish into Snowball's face. The, king, the kind who wants you to be a better queen, a queen than the ones we had before. Because I know you, and I know you can be. But feel free to keep living your life by the rules of the oppressive wall, if that's what you want. And feel free to move me down to the bottom if the list want to get home. She took a step toward the beach, then turned back for one more shot. If that mysterious, mysterious magic ring ever lets you get home, after everything Animus Magic has done to us, I can't believe you throw into your talents again. She splashed away furiously. Snowball threw herself under the water and screamed out of rage in a flurry of bubbles. This was why she didn't tell anyone her problems, because they would definitely make them worse. Lynx was not right. It was Lynx was not right. It was just a stupid broken ring. Snowball had definitely not misinterpreted what a gift of vision might mean, and this had nothing to do with her dream last night. No, she would stand for it. When she surfaced again, Lynx was with the strangers by the fire, where some of the little dragonettes were building a kind of tree-like termite mound out of sand. Snowfall squinted at them as two young leaflets pounced on the ship, shape and stopped it flat. The opal ring winkled gold blue lavender in the morning light. I'm not afraid of you, Snowfall stopped fiercely. I'm getting rid of you today, even if it means I have to cut my own cloth to do it. She would get this ring off and throw it into the ocean, and then she would make, make sure the strange dragons went to sanctuary, and then she would go home, and everything would be normal. Everyday anxiety festival her life was supposed to be. Snowfall splashed her way back to the beach. Waving regularly at the guards, nothing to see here. No queen losing their royal minds. Certainly not. She waited until she was sure Lynx wasn't watching her, and then she tried smoldering her claw and palm oil from one of the jars that had Jerboa's heart. Hut. That didn't work either. It only left Stoffa's talent feeling greasy. Oh, please, Jerboa said acidly from the doorway. Help yourself. My stuff is everybody's stuff, evidently. This is your fault, Snowfall said, brandishing the new, extremely shiny ring. That you weren't too much hideous jewelry, Draboa said. Makes sense. I do have that effect on dragons. I wouldn't need this if your stupid magic worked, Snowfall said with a flick of her wings. Have you checked today? Is it working now? Frown lines on Draboa's face deepened. 
No, it's not working for anyone. She glanced back into the hut. Snowfall wasn't sure why. Really, definitely? Snowfall asked. She held out her front hand. Let's test it. Tell this one to slide off my claw. Stravoa sighed and cast another glance around, but no other dragons were close enough to pay attention to them. The seven reached out and tapped the ring twice. Come off the queen's claw this instant, she said. The ring didn't move. Snowfall tried pulling on it, but it was just as stuck as before. She growled softly. Is it animus touched? Jaboa said, finally sounded curious. I thought so, Snowfall said, but it seemed to be flipping broken. Animus touched by who? Jaboa frowned again. When? Like thousands of years ago, Snowfall said with a sigh. By the worst icing animus in history, I'm guessing. Some kind of worm brain sand disorder. Why would anyone enchant a ring to stay on someone's claw? What kind of stupid... Waste of magic is that? Jabot scratched her jaw throughout three, and her tense expression had relaxed. Maybe it's a chance to frustrate easy annoyed queens into learning some patience. Boo hiss! Snowfall shouted. Several of the silk queens jumped and turned to see what the noise was. She lowered her voice again. I don't need an ancient accessory to teach me anything. I'm very patient. I have been queen for months without stabbing anyone in the face with an icicle, despite lots of dragons highly deserving it. Well, Jaboa said, if my magic comes back, I'll make removing you your ring my top prior priority. How about that? No need, Snowfall said. I have another plan. She narrowed her eyes at Jerboa and added in a whisper, but if it does come back, tell me right away. Jerboa's expression was quite far from reassuring, but she ducked into her hut without saying anything else. Snowfall caught a glimpse of the night wind and said, so fast asleep. She moved away as quickly as she could. The last thing she needed was that dragon poking around inside her head. It was bad enough that Link's making worried eyes at her all the time. She didn't need any nut wings sinking. She was weak or cursed by weird jewelry. Over by the fire, Luna was finally alone, more or less surrounded by a mound of discarded risk cup. Most of the other silk queens had gone off to gather coconuts or fly quietly on the scent warm set. But Luna and Lynx was up in the sky, flying with one of the leaf wings. Snowfall slided up to Luna. The silk queen dropped the cuff she's been holding and eyed Snowfall with alarm. Hey, Snowfall said gruffly, the fire Fred saying, can you try it on my ring? It's stuck and it's annoying me. You're the queen of the ice, right? Luna said, lifting her chin. No one who kicked my tribe out of your kingdom yesterday. Lucky for you, Snowfall snapped, or they wouldn't be here. <coughs> Having this touching reunion with you. Luna rolled her eyes and held her claw. Show me. Snowfall gingerly offered the talon with the ring on it. Luna a flame lit a fire from the sand beside her and bent over their twine claws. The burning flame that brushed the silver curve of the ring once, twice, three times, without even leaving a trace on the metal. Luna frowned and tried again. The heat was enormously uncomfortable that close to Snowfall's scales, but she didn't like the feel of the silk wing gripping her talons either. But she held still, glaring into the opal shimmering depths until Luna finally said, that's so weird. Sorry, Your Majesty. It's not working. Snowball tilt lifted the opal to eye level and hissed at it. How could fire not work? Don't tell Lynx, she said to Luna. Um, sure, Luna agreed. You're welcome. For what? Snowfall snapped and stomped away. She found a large boulder in a shaded spot near the tree line and perched on it to brood for a while. Her guards fanned out in a district circle around her, but one of them and one of them brought her a fish tea, and she even remembered to thank it for So at least I did one ex I excellently queenly thing today. The other animus touch scenes came off easy. No problem. There was stealth wristband and tiara strength off and back and nothing sinister about them at all. Snowfall had always assumed that if something was made by animus, it would be something great. Something good and helpful and smart and clever. Like an ice, ice wing animus wouldn't make a secret evil spell like a light would. Surely, right? The ring was not a big deal, she told herself. It was Link's fault that she even felt worried about it at all. And really, if she thought about it, she felt fine. Better than usual, in fact. Probably because she didn't have to see Anne touch a smug face for a whole day.
Moreover, if there was a secret spell on the ring, it hadn't given her a terrible illness yet or turned her into a different dragon. Ha! It could try. She was always snowball and always would be. It hadn't tricked her into letting strange invader dragons into her kingdom. She was the same as always. Everything was known. Even the lingering sadness from the dream lifted a little as the day went on. She could see Atala from her spot, and the Silk Queen didn't look totally miserable. So that helped. Atala got her wrist cuff burned up, ate a town full of dates, laughed at a leafling when, when he tried to cr- catch a crab and it twinkled his nose, and looked several naps. The Silk Queen had also spent ste- ste- a, a while staring out at the ocean. Thinking about the family she left behind, so about Jess. I hope they're safe. <gasps> no, I don't. I don't care at all. She shook her head vigorously. I don't know them. Why would I care? Stupid dream or vision or whatever. Shortly before sunset, Snowfall heard the cracks and snaps of talon steps in the trees behind her. She stepped and spotted the frowny leaf and pacing between their palms, from fallen coconuts into a sack. Another green dragon followed her, this one with pinkish streaks on her wings and horns. We just got here, said the pink tinted leaf languagely. Why are you acting like a frustrated panther already? Wasn't this the goal? But we can't stay, Cobra Lily, said the other one. We can't just find a nice safe spot to settle down and get comfortable. That's not the plan. I won't give up on our whole continent and everything, everyone there. Cobra Lily shrugged, an elegant lift and fall off her wings. Can't be upset about losing Nettle and Milana and a few silly silkies, she said. Seems like an upside to me. No more Nettle annoying us. No more Milana telling you what to do. This scowl, scowly one fixed her with a particularly ferocious scowl. Queen Sequoia is back there. Hot. Plus half the dragons we grew up with. A monster has stolen our home. And by the way, those silly silk wings risk a lot to help us. Don't get significant. Don't get excited, Cobra Lily said. I'm just saying, this place is already significantly nicer than a jungle full of carnivorous plants or a land full of mind-controlled bug dragons. Maybe we could stay here, making a new home. Our one queen over both the Silk Queen and the Leaf. I bet most of the dragons wouldn't mind following a queen Sundew. No, Sundew growled. Stop saying that. Hazel is our queen. She half turned and finally spotted su- Snowfall laying on the boulder. Her tail lashed for a moment, and then she spread her wings and lifted off into the sky. That's interesting, Snowfall said. Sundew, she is a threat to Hazel's rule, even if she doesn't mean to be. Other dragons want her to be. Just like the dragons who probably still want Crystal to be queen instead of me. How many of them are there? Are they hiding her? Are they planning something? Gathering an army? Conspiring with Nightwings? Where is she? Snowfall bro- brooded about this until one of the guards came over to inform her that Shrine Tribe decided to stay one more night before setting out for Sanctuary in the morning. Snowfall could tell that Hazel would have liked to stay longer. The leaf and queen kept leaning wistfully on the palm trees and blazing up their swearing leaves. The moon was bustling around, reassuring everyone that sanctuary would be better, with more trees and lots of spade and food for them. Highly suspicious. Pro- possibly, possibly some kind of nefarious plan at work, if a nightwing was all excited about it. At sunset, Snowfall dug her sleeping hole with extra vigor, throwing uh, all the act. Ac- uh, access sand in Lynx's direction. She was not going to worry about this ridiculous way. She refused to have another vision of mystery dragons she didn't know. She was the queen, and she would simply order her brain to having a nice ordinary night with perfectly ordinary dreams. Yes. She curled up, closed her eyes, and dropped almost instantly into another dragon scale. Chapter 8. She is alone in the kitchen, rolling antelope meatballs, trying to keep her claws busy. She's trying not to think about Cinnabar or how she should be with the rest of the chrysalis, finally trying to change the world. She's not, she's trying not to hate her misshapen wing. I'm sorry, Tao, Cinnabar had whispered, clasping her front talons between her own. We talked about this. You knew if they were fighting, you wouldn't be able to join us. It would be too dangerous for you. 
You mean I couldn't keep up with you? Tao had answered ruefully. Thinking up, think about who we're fighting, though. Cinnabar had pressed. What if he set Tree Hopper on the battlefield? All white eyed and zombie brain. What if he attacked you or me? You're better off not having to fight, fight face him like that. You'll be safe here until we win and come back for you. You better win. Tall had hugged her, her heart beating fiercely. Being left behind was worse than she expected, though. Not knowing what what would happen. Not knowing what would happen. Not knowing uh not knowing what would happen. All her friends all fighting a battle without her, wondering if they really had found the antidote to the mind control. Is Tree Hopper finally free of Queen Wasp, or is he killing Silkwings right now, dead eyes and soulless? She shivers. How can she ever forget? How can will he ever forgive himself if Wasp forced him to hurt Tal's friends? There hasn't been any sign of the hive wings since every single one of them suddenly froze, pointed to the nearest window, and flew away north. It's peaceful with all of Jewel Hive nearly empty, but also unsettled. Tal! Right, not every hive wing. Lady Scarab marched into the kitchen. And I, the meatball, so intently she practically sticked her no nose into one of them. Why does it smell like this? Antelope meatballs, Tall says patiently. I have the only good recipe for antelope meatballs, Lady Scarab announces. If you don't put chives in it, those won't be worth eating. I did put chives in it, Tall says. Probably too many, Lady Scarab sniffs. Something crashes into the hall behind him, and they both turn toward the sound of galloping talent steps. Lady Jewel burst into the kitchen, and sight of her face sends Tao straight into full-blown planet. Cinnabar was just here, Jewel gasped, with a message. The Hivings won. They're burning the poison jungle, and they're when they're done, they'll come here, and now they're getting mind control silkwings as well. What? Tao clutches the counter, her talon slippery with grease. She can't process any piece of this information, let alone all of it. She lashes on to the first thing. Cinema is here. Is she all right? She only has about time. Oh, she only has time to give me the message, Jewel says. They have to get to the other hives as fast as they can to warn the rest of the silkwings. I told her we'll get everyone here to safety. She glances around the room wildly, as though she considered trying to fit everyone, every silkwing in the hive into one of her potato barrels. But how? Tao asks. Where can we go? Her heart feels like it's squeezing inward, shrinking into a nest of fear and spikes. It weren't supposed to lose. It wasn't supposed to get like this. Well, this is a fine mess, Scare Lady Scarab hisses. Now I was going to take down my dreadful niece. Certainly would be nice if I had a daughter willing to fight for the throne that should actually be ours. Not now, mother, Jewel says, Cinnabur, said to bring everyone to Lake Scorpion. There's somewhere we can go from there, she said, but we have to all go together. She pressed her claws to the temples from remote. We need messengers to check every level of the hive. Someone to go to the webs. Dragons to carry the cocoons of any silkwings in Metamorphosis right now. Others to carry all the silkwings and the hivewings eggs into the hatcheries. No, Scara says, not the hivewing eggs, Jewel. We can't leave them behind, Jewel protests. All those tiny dragonettes. They're already infected, Scarab says bluntly. As soon as they hatch, Wasp will be able to see fruit eyes, and then she'll find us. She can bring them, you can bring them along, or you'll doom everyone else. Drew curls her talons and takes a deep breath. Tal knows she is thinking of her own children, who are out of reach now, summoned along with everyone else. Jewel had thought they were all free of the mind control until they flew away with the, all the other hybrids. Lady Scarab must guess Jules thought too, because she says, with un, uh, unaccountanimous gentle, gentleness, I miss them too. But it's better that we know at least. She could have used them against us if she left them here. She still can, Jules says quietly. Only if we can find me. Only if she can find you to threaten you, Scarab points out. They'll be safer if you vanish. Jewel doesn't answer, but her tail lashes across the floor, knocking over a stack of lemons. Maybe we can bring some of the hiving eggs, Tash suggests. The one who have only been said once, remember? Cricket said that Wasp has to inject each egg twice to be able to control them. That was her fury, Scarab growls. She could be wrong. It's too risky. 
But if we can save some of them, we have to. Cool says, I'll think about it. And meanwhile, you two go bring as many silkings here as you can, and then we'll split into teams. She hurries out of the kitchen, again, murmuring lists and tasks to herself. Tal doesn't stop to hear any more of Scarlet's grim warnings. Uh, Scarab's, uh, Scarab's grim warnings. She runs out of the kitchen, through Jewel's mansion, her talent. A talent skidding on the floor. She's starting with the other servants and the prisoners in Jewel's dungeon. How many silkwings are there in the whole hive? Will they all listen to her or to Lady Jewel? How fast can they escape? Only as fast as our slowest dragons, which includes me. The terror drives her onward, calling dragons after dragons to the ball. She can't get the images out of her head, imagining of her friend, images of her friends with white eyes like the mind control hybrids, images of tree hoppers slicing ruthlessly for any silkling who tries to stop it, images of queen wasp burning the jungle, killing all the leafers, laughing her merciless laugh. But Cinemar got away from her, so it's possible if we can move fast enough, we have to escape. We have to, or none of us will ever be free again. Boop, boop, boop. Snowfall woke up extremely grumpy. That is, first she woke up in a state of heart-pounding panic. Confused and terrified about how she was suddenly asleep on the beach that she should be gathering dragons to escape Jewel Hive. But as her heart rate gradually slowed to normal and she remembered who she actually was, her natural grumpiness returned to the power of ten. What the moons was that? She glanced down and saw that the uh, claws were shaking. She shoved them as far into the sand as they could to stop them. Okay, so we're in here. Uh, we are uh, page one, three, five. So there's going to be five more pages until the next chapter. I said no more vision, she hissed at the ring under her breath, and this time she couldn't even pretend she just happened to dream about someone she seen. She, she never laid eyes on Tao in her life and probably never would, so either she conjured an entire mad and imaginary dragon with a forbidden love and revolutionary friends and an entire hive and about a million more dragons to worry about. What a stupid magic a drag ripped her brain all the way across the ocean to torture her with scary things she could do nothing about. What is the point of this? Snowfall heard someone floundering through the sand toward her. She lifted her head out of the hole, and of course it was Lynx, looking all the kinds of wound up. I have a very Lynx cried as soon as she spotted the Snowfall's face. No, good morning, or hello, your majesty, or sorry for being a judgmental walrus yesterday. Some of shook her wings airily. Marvelous, she said. Let me guess. It involves me doing something wrong. You woke me up to ask about weird dreams yesterday, Link said, pointing at her, because you had a weird dream. And that ring you can't get off is called the gift of vision, isn't it? That's why you thought it was about eyesight, but it's not. I think that is what's giving you weird dreams. Because they're not dreams, they're visions. Get it? See what I mean? Gift of vision? Great eyes, spirit. Stop talking already, Snowfall growled. I figured that out about a hundred years ago. And not even, it, but even if that's the case, it does not explain why the ring is stuck on my claw. I still think it's broken. But it's doing something, Lynx. It, but it is doing something. Lynx flickered her tail, and now her expression was definitely veering toward excited. Maybe it's important. Do you, did you have another vision last night? What was it about? I thought you didn't trust the enemy's magic, and wearing this was a terrible idea, Snowfall said accusingly. I'm still right about that, Lynx said, but as long as you're stuck with it, we should figure out what it's trying to tell us. It's not trying to tell me anything, Snowfall protested. It's a ring, an in animated object. With no agenda or feeling, except maybe smugness. You're very smug, she snapped at the opal. Ark, Snowfall, tell me what you saw. Link slashed her tail, standing up gusts of sand. Something happening back in the ice kingdom? Something that's going to happen? No! Snowfall barked. Nothing useful. Nothing about my tribe or my problems. Nothing important at all. If this is stupid magic, then it's really stupid magic. Why would I, Queen of the Ice Rooms, need to know all the inner emotions of a bunch of rainbow dragons from a cross, from a completely ever-like continent that I've never seen? 
inner emotions, Link said, like you could feel what the silk wings were feeling. First, I was one of the sad snaps, Snowfall said, pointing up at the beach. Her name is Atala, totally tragedy face. And then last night, I was some random dragon named Tao, who was stuck back over there and freaking out. Why would I need to see that? It's not like I can do anything to help her. Not that she would have. Even if she could, she wasn't going to invite more invasive, strange-looking dragons here. Hmm, Link said. Maybe you can, somehow. Maybe we just need to lay out everything you learn from your visions and figure out what to do with them. That's not a gift. That's homework, Snowfall snapped. I've had quite enough of that. Thank you. I'm queen now. Other dragons should have to do the things I don't want to do. So tell me about it, Link uh, said eagerly and everything about the first one before you forget it and i'll figure out what they mean leaks pointed one claw no i am not going to ignore this nonsense aren't there any snow slow slug dragons ready to fly to sanctuary yet links looked as if she wanted to keep arguing but she stayed quiet as long as she, as she followed snowfall up the beach to investigate and no of course nobody was ready to go of course, it took the forage and tribe the entire morning to get organized. And then they decided to leave half the dragons behind so the strong ones could go ahead and make sure there was a place for everyone. So then they had to resettle the ones that were leaving behind. And then they decided to take a break to eat something. By the time the wings finally looked to the sky, the sun was high above them. Stofa was talking back to the, summon the rest of her guards when she heard someone say Queen Thorn's name. Her ears prickled, and she turned to Moon, talking to the Sandwing, who wasn't Jerboa. I'll fly ahead and visit Born on the way, she said. You know, in case she wants to know why there's an unusual flood of dra uh, unusual-looking dragons flying out over her kingdom. Seemed like she, something she might want to, a heads up about. Tell her where we're going, Luke suggested. Sanctuary is technically on the border of Sandwing and Skyrim territory, so she should know that they're there. Ha! Snowfall shot to herself, pacing forward again. Let's see how she likes it. If Thorn lets all these dragons flop around her desert and sell on her board, maybe she isn't as strong as a queen as everyone thinks. She wondered how Queen Ruby would feel about these new dragons living on the edge of Skyrim territory. Sanctuary was supposed to be a small place of where dragons would, could go to the to their home, own own kingdom could live. Dragons like Snowfall's cousin, Winter, had been banished, or the remaining towns of peace wanted to stay with one another instead of the uh, more than they wanted to return to their tribes. Snowfall didn't think Ruby or Foreign would ever imagine it as a refuge for hundreds of strange dragons when they agreed to let the towns of peace build it. And what happens if more, even more dragons follow them here from Pantala? Is Cinnabar trying to bring all the rest of the Silkwings over to all of them from all the hives? Where else can they go with Queen Wars and her brainwashed hivings controlling all of Pantala? Stofa cut the train of salt with a hiss. That's not, that's their problem, not mine. Not my problem. I advise them to care, care of. I'm not responsible for anyone else and I don't care about them. Terror seemed to be li uh, lingering in her veins, though, and she couldn't shake the urgent, panicking feeling that she had to get an entire city of dragons to safety before it was too late. She wondered how old the vision was. Had the scene happened last night when Snowfall dreamt it or days earlier, like the vision of Atala? If it happened days ago, were, what were, where were Tao and Jewel and Scarab now, safely hidden or captured? Don't care. Stop thinking about them. Let's go, she ordered her guards. They took up their positions in formation around her and followed the silkwings and leaflings away from the ocean. East into the desert sky, Snowfall glanced back and saw Draboa sitting outside her hut, watching them leave. Why does she seem to care more about her magic, that her magic isn't working? Snowfall wondered if she had been an animus magic, animus dragon, and then suddenly her power was gone, she would have absolutely freaked out. Trebella on the other town seemed mostly amused by how much that annoyed Snowfall. It was still possible she was lying to Snowfall, but if Animus Dragon wasn't working, wasn't Tsunami's gang of richest do-gooders have used it to bring all the Pentala dragons to safety or to stop Queen Wasp? They definitely were. 
They use it to end the plague and stop Darcy Walker. They could solve all of Pantala's dragon problems with a snap of their claws if they had magic right now. So why wouldn't they? Would, why would magic just stop working? Snowfall eyeballed the opal ring. Do you know anything about this? She growled. Do you not work an actually useful magic doesn't? She shook out her talon grumbly and glared at it again. You know what? How about instead of filling my head with sympathy and nonsense, you give me some information I really need, like a vision that explains what happened to magic? Maybe that's what she was doing wrong. Maybe she needs to tell the vision what she wanted. Oh, that would be so simple and great. Visions of anything she wanted. Why hadn't she thought of that earlier? Yes, she said firmly. You hear that ring? Tonight, no more silkling nightmares. Just a nice, uncomplicated scene where I find out why Animus Dragon isn't working. That's a good plan. The opal caught the light and sparkled rainbows at her. Snowfall couldn't tell if those were absolutely your majesty. Anything you say, rainbows or ha ha ha, I'll give you whatever I want to give you and there's nothing you can do about it. Ha ha, rainbows. I guess I'll find that out later. I guess I'll find it out tonight. She flew up after the ribbon of dragons stretching across the sky, trying to feel confident that she solved her problems. But it was hard to shake the ominous feeling that maybe, just perhaps, she stumbled into a more dangerous magic than she accepted. Expected. All right. So we're going to be reading more when I ever have free time. I'm going to be posting. Please help us subscribe. We're almost at 50. 43 right now. Seven more, and then we reach our 50 subscriber milestone mark. And then we're going to be go aiming for 100. So I hope you enjoyed. Remember to subscribe and leave a like for this video. Peace.